What's up everybody? My name is Parasite. Welcome back to Rebuilding Nebraska. Today we've got our second offseason here with the Cornhuskers. Last year we started a full rebuild. We had a bunch of seniors graduating and we had a bunch of players that didn't have the quality to take this team where we wanted to take it. And so we brought in 24 new freshmen, many of them starting their freshman season. This year we don't have to do quite as much. We've got a base now. Today we look to build on that. We're going to start this offseason on the coaching side as we start with the coaching changes. I haven't looked at this yet, but the game is kind of already spoiled for me that we have a new defensive coordinator. Because you can see in the bottom left, we have 23 upgrades available for a defensive coordinator. So let's see, did ours leave or did he get fired? Because our defense was not very good last season, but he still could have been hired elsewhere. Let's see. Let's see what the changes are. Let's go to the Big Ten. We don't really care about everybody else. Uh, let's just look at some of the other teams in the Big Ten. If anyone lost their jobs, Michigan head coach staying on. Uh, Michigan State head coach staying on. I think he could have gotten to maybe a bigger team because they had a pretty good season last year. Uh, Minnesota obviously fired everyone. They were awful. Nebraska. So our offensive coordinator got an extension and we let our defensive coordinator's contract expire. So he didn't get taken by another team. We let him go. And so our new coach is Halfley. He's going to be our new defensive coordinator. Uh, Penn State fired their head coach. Kind of not too surprising. They didn't have a very good season. Wisconsin extension, no other big moves. So let's look at our new defensive coordinator. So our new defensive coordinator is Jeff Halfley. He was fired as the head coach from Boston College, and he's taken over as our defensive coordinator, and he is a massive upgrade over what we had previously. He is a level 23, and our offensive coordinator, which is I think the same level as our defensive was last year, is a level six. Obviously he started as a level one, hasn't got a lot of improvement over the past two years. So this is a big jump bringing in Jeff Halfley. So he can put a lot of points into all these trees that I think could be really helpful for our defense. It struggled last year. It's still a pretty young unit. Can Jeff Halfley make a difference? So obviously we got plus threes and from everything from power moves, block shedding, uh, coverages, both man and zone. We do both quite a bit. Uh, tackling, that was a big one to get. Uh, raw time, which improves the speed, agility, acceleration. I think that could be big. And then a little bit in catching, but just because he had to. All right, now we get to players leaving. We're going to have some seniors leave, not a huge senior class, especially not compared to last year, but we could have some freshmen that were redshirted that could look to transfer in terms of actually underclassmen that leave to go to the draft. Maybe not many, if any. I think Ty Robinson is like the only one I could think about that might try to go pro. No one else is really a high enough rating to decide to go pro. A lot of our starters were freshmen. Let's get into this. Who's going to leave? Obviously, I don't want any of the freshmen to leave. They all were part of my plans. I recruited them for a reason. Let's see, who leaves? Is anyone going to get drafted either? So one transfer, and that's Jeremy Thompson. That's not a big loss. That is fine. So I mean, obviously, I'd, if I can convince him to stay, I would. But I mean, he's going to Virginia, looks like. Garrett Nelson looks like he's going to get drafted in the second round. Last year, he wanted to declare as a junior. I told him, I got him to convince him to stay another year, saying, you know, you could go in the third round. He was projected to go in the seventh last year. He does one better. He's projected to go in the second after an okay season he's a good run stopper an okay pass rusher doesn't have much else to his game but no one else is leaving just the seniors obviously there's a few that we'll miss Quentin Newsom was our number two corner this year had a few interceptions had kind of an up and down season Will Honus did fine as a run stopping middle linebacker Wyatt Luer again fine without being spectacular though Darius Payne was a pretty good coverage linebacker I will I do think I'll miss him only having to play one season with him is kind of disappointing uh, Luke Reimer was kind of our captain last year. He was a two-year starter, started middle linebacker last year, started left outside linebacker in base packages this year, losing our punter. But outside of that, I mean, Cam Juergens, our highest overall guy, 88 overall. I'm kind of surprised he's not getting drafted. Size-wise, I think he should be good enough to be able to get drafted. I know this, they've got some settings, some things set for different positions. If you're below it, you literally can't get drafted no matter what your overall is. But I think he should qualify, but still looks like he's not going to the draft. That's a little surprising. Uh, Tyreek Johnson, the only other starter, really. He was our slot guy. Again, didn't really see much of him, but that's kind of a good thing with the cornerback. Now, what do we do with Jerry Thompson, though? In terms of transfers, I want to kind of play this realistically, both in transfers and players looking to go to the draft. I think I did that with Garrett Nelson. He went from a seventh round pick to a second, and that's what I knew could happen. So I think it made sense for me to tell him to stay here. But Jeremy Thompson, he's probably not going to have a big role for us in the near future, at the very least. I had to look at Virginia's receivers. You can't really see the roster right now, but you can see the players that put up stats last year. And a lot of them are on the older side. They're two top guys. They're going to be seniors next year. And then like their third and fourth were both seniors this year. So they're both graduating. 
I think they had one kind of guy that was a sophomore that is a higher overall. Obviously, can't see the rest of the players. Can't see who they have redshirted. But I think it makes sense. He's going to what might technically be a better program right now in Virginia. And I don't think his playing time expectation is really going to change. So I don't think I'm going to try to convince him to stay. Jeremy Thompson is going to be transferring to Virginia. All right, now quick look at both the draft results and transfer requests. Probably not a lot in either of these. We're only supposed to have one player drafted, and that's Garrett Nelson. He's supposed to go in the second. Did he? He did. Garrett Nelson is a second round pick. That might be the highest player we've had drafted so far in this series. I think last year, uh, what, Jojo DeMond got drafted. I think he was our highest pick. I think it might've been in the third round. Garrett Nelson goes in the second. Now, do we have anyone wanting to transfer here? We had a couple last year. Do we have any this year? We don't. Now it's time to do our off season recruiting. We're gonna start by looking at where our class currently ranks. I think we have 11 commits right now. We had the number four class going into the offseason last year. This year, we currently sit at the number 13 class. We do have less commits than we had last year, but I think the quality of our players is higher, which is kind of what we're going for. All right, now let's get to our recruiting board and who we're gonna target for offseason recruiting. We've got 15,000 points to work with, and I think we're gonna spread it a little bit more thin than we did last year. We don't have as many glaring needs, but we wanna bring in as many good players as possible. Last year, we had like three main guys we felt like we had to get. We got, I think, two of the three. This year, we've got about five, six, seven guys that we're targeting. Starting off with our number one guy, and that is Kyle Wade, the guard. 79 overall, and he's going to be a freshman. We also do have Joe Henderson, who we're going after, but he's a Juco junior, 80 overall. And there's a bigger gap to top with Joe Henderson than there is Kyle Wade. We're 500 points behind Michigan. And Kyle Wade, we're only 65 behind Minnesota, who are awful. So I feel like he should choose us. And I think he's probably the one I'm going to put the most points into to try to secure. I think he's probably the biggest one we can get. Uh, number two guy is Quentin Ingram. I think we need another safety. TCU have a decent lead over us, 880 points, but I still think he's one of the more important players to go after. Then we have Joe Henderson. If we can get both him and Wade, I would love that. But obviously I'm going to target him a little bit less. If Michigan aren't too worried, I mean, I'm going to put over 520 points in. I'm going to see if I can jump him, but if not, I don't think I'm going to put a huge investment into him because I'm really going to try to go after Kyle Wade. Uh, then we've got a wide receiver, Chad Brown. We've got a 900-point lead over Tennessee. Our wide receiver group isn't the strongest in terms of quality, especially once we get near the bottom. So I want to bring in some more quality. Obviously, we lost one to uh, transfer to Virginia. And so Chad Brown's going to kind of be his replacement. He's got some pretty decent speed. 72 catching, which is good enough, really. Good route running. I think he could be good in a year or two's time. Uh, then up next, Matt Campbell. We have a senior tight end. Hickman's going to be a senior next year. He's going to be our number two tight end. So I would like to add another, but only a 365-point lead over Missouri. And it's been close for the past, like, five or six weeks. Where no one's really taking an advantage there. So I think if we want him, we'd have to put some significant points into him. And I don't know if that's worth it because he's a Juco. I do think he's a Juco sophomore, though. Then we've got Robert Mills. Not really a guy I've targeted a lot until just recently. Because originally when I looked at him, I thought he was probably a quarterback. He's got some pretty decent throw power, accuracy, okay speed. But we've got a quarterback. I don't know if we need him. We've already brought in another one. So we don't really need another quarterback. But I think he'd also be a really good short yardage running back. Not the best speed, but 88 trucking along with 72 elusiveness, 81 break tackle. As a short yardage goal line running back, I mean, Yakez yet might be losing his job to Robert Mills because he just does that a lot better. So I do have a lot of interest in bringing in Robert Mills just to be kind of a role player for us. And we've got a decent lead on him uh, at almost 2,000 points over Georgia. So I might not have to put a lot of points into him to be able to land him. Up next, Cole Jones, player that's probably unlikely, but really high overall. We really need linebackers. So I might put 1,500 points. Hope USC doesn't put any in him. See if we can get him other than that. Probably not going to be worth significant investment, but he's really good. But Titus Goodman is kind of the other guy, that would, kind of the fallback option. He'd be a right outside linebacker like I think Cole Jones could be. I think Cole Jones could do multiple things, but I think probably he'd be a right outside guy for me, uh, especially because we need some depth there. But Titus Goodman kind of does the same thing. We've got a big lead on him. Uh, decent coverage ability. Maybe on the left, actually, seeing that coverage. But okay pass rush as well. Better than some of the other lower level guys I've got. Much better pass rushing than them. So I think he probably would slot in on the right-hand side just as a backup, though, which we could use the depth. And that's about it. I mean, obviously, I'd really like a center as well, but we've got a pretty big gap to top with Eric Harris, over 1,000 points. 68 overall, backup center. Probably not worth it to put that kind of investment in. 
when we've got some better guys to go after and then just some other guys that we're kind of behind on for the most part are not too worried about like robert barclay like gun unlikely as well so now i need to figure out how to divvy up these points all right i think this is what i've settled on we're gonna be going after six guys in the off season starting with kyle wade we knew he's gonna be our number one guy ultimately i put 6500 points into him i originally started him out at 5000 but i mean if there's one guy i don't want to lose out on it's probably kyle wade so i'm gonna put some decent amount of points into him uh quentin ingram we've gone with 2500 wouldn't be a massive loss if we don't get him but i still would really like him so i'm gonna put a little bit of investment not gonna go all out just to make sure we can keep a lot of points into wade uh joe henderson i'm gonna go 1500 give us a thousand point lead over michigan if they close that then okay i for a juco jr i don't think it's super necessary to go all in when this is still a rebuild here uh chad brown decided with 2000 points into him tennessee are right there so i think we need to put some a decently significant amount of points into him hoping 2000 can be enough because i would really like to land him too robert mills we're gonna throw an, a k in there we've got a decent 2000 point lead but we saw last year those leads can go away pretty quickly so i want to put some points into him i really would like him to have a round as a role player i think he could make a big difference but again probably not enough to go significantly points into him and then cole jones basically just enough to put us over usc in case they don't put any points into him probably really unlikely but i feel like it's worth to take that punt just because how talented he is and we decided not to put any points into matt campbell We've got a fullback who is naturally a tight end. So if you need a third guy, he could do it. I just don't think it's worth putting points into Matt Campbell when... I mean, I just took all those out to basically put into Kyle Wade. And I think it's probably worth it. Uh, Goodman also, we're not going to put any points into. We've got a 4,000 point lead. If we don't get him, it's not the end of the world. We still should be able to get him without putting points into him. I feel like at this point, he's probably more likely that he just doesn't commit anywhere. We've seen that quite a bit and it's really annoying. Now, who do we get? Who do we miss out on? We missed out on a couple of key players last year. A couple that we definitely didn't think we we're going to miss out on. Hopefully, we can get Kyle Wade. Anyone else is a bonus. All right, signing day is come and gone. And it went okay. We got Kyle Wade. That was the big one. He has committed to us. That is going to be huge because I think both of our guards are seniors or at least juniors. And neither are really that talented. So, I think Kyle Wade is a really big get for us. We didn't get Joe Henderson, but we kind of assumed he weren't going to get him. Uh, we didn't get robert mills he's gone to usc that's annoying i really wanted robert mills uh barclay we had a big lead but i didn't really worry about it. i don't know if he even offered him a scholarship uh cole jones also commits to usc probably saw that one coming as well didn't get quentin ingram he's gone to tcu uh jared gross we knew about for a while same with Jerome miles matt campbell goes to missouri we do get chad brown so we get our receiver really happy about that uh brian brad Adams, weren't really going after anyone else we got Zach Owens, who's an outside linebacker. Not the one I wanted at right outside linebacker. He's not much of a pass rusher, but he'll be depth there, I guess. And no one else. We don't get Eric Harris, but kind of knew that was coming as well. An okay recruiting class. All right, before we get to see how much we missed out on some of the other guys we're targeting, what is our class at now? It was number 13, and that signings has put us up to number eight. And I feel like a lot of that's Kyle Wade. So last year, I think we had the number two recruiting class in the nation. This year, we have less recruits, and we're still top 10. We get number eight. I'm pretty happy with that. Now, let's see the recruiting board. How much do we miss out on some of those guys, like the safety? Uh, Taz Goodman, who's the outside linebacker I wanted. I said he wasn't going to declare, and he didn't. So frustrating. Had a 4,000-point lead. No one goes after him. We had a scholarship offer. Why does that happen? Uh, Quentin Ingram, 400 points behind TCU. So close. Joe Henderson, 1,100 points behind. We'd have to put some significant points into him. Chad Brown barely get him 700 points robert mills yeah holy moly i mean we had a 2000 point lead and we put a thousand points into him which means alabama oklahoma georgia and usc all went heavy into robert mills usc ended up getting him uh barclay we didn't really go after texas gets him draw miles as well kyle wade wow minnesota didn't even try really we put in, what, 6,500 points, and we end up 4,000 points ahead of everyone else. Tennessee ended up being number two, but we get our guy, Kyle Wade. And I could have put more points into Quentin Ingram, I would have got him, but you just never know. Cole Jones, about 2,000 points. Yeah, we'd have to put a decent number of points into him. Matt Campbell, same thing. And then Eric Harris, knew we weren't going to get him. No other surprises. So our recruiting class this year, start at the bottom, is Matt Lamb, who's going to compete at middle linebacker. Jack Haley's probably going to be redshirted at right tackle. 
Joseph Monroe, who's going to start a left outside linebacker. Our starting punter, and John Robinson. Uh, BJ Cook, who's going to redshirt. Adam Taylor, who's going to be a, probably a, the number two right outside linebacker if he doesn't start, possibly. Uh, Quint Edwards, probably going to be a redshirt defensive end. Clarence Little, probably also getting redshirted. Tim Holly, probably the same thing, as is uh, Sean Washington and probably Marvin White. But, I mean, we've got some good quality here that as long as they don't transfer, we are have a bright future. And in this one we already brought in, we also brought in Zach Owens, probably going to be a third choice right outside linebacker. Uh, Kyle Wade, who, I don't know, he, I don't know what to do with Kyle Wade. He might start at right guard. We'll see. And then Chad Brown, who's going to be redshirted as well. And that's our class. I'm pretty happy with it. All right, now we get to position changes. We didn't have any athletes, so probably not a lot of movement here. Maybe just moving around some offensive linemen. But we will see if we got any other walk-ons. We had a pretty big win at quarterback last year. Do we get any other big, possibly Juco walk-ons? Not a quarterback. We do have Sam Green, who was the guy last year. He's probably going to be the number two. Sean Washington, probably going to be redshirted. Uh, running back. No new players there as well. Clarence Little coming in. Also, like I said, probably going to be redshirted. Uh, fullback, we've got Fedone. Wide receiver. Uh, we do have some walk-ons there. Lester McBride and Cameron Lee. Neither are any good. Uh, Lee's at least speedy. He was, he's also six foot seven. I'm assuming he can't catch whatsoever. Uh, 59 catching. I was right. Uh, what about McBride? Can he at least catch? Because he's not fast. I mean, better. McBride actually might be a roll guy at some point. We also do have Chad Brown, obviously, in there. That's nice to have. Uh, in terms of seniors, I don't think we have any senior receivers. We have three juniors. So at some point, we'll have to rebuild this wide receiver core. Tight end, no walk-ons there. Still got our main three guys. Jennings going to be, or Hickman going to be a senior. Uh, left tackle, we've got Haley in there. He's going to be on the right-hand side, actually. That's going to be his position. Right tackle. Might even start there. Got our main three guys on the left side. Mark Graham there. Uh, left guard, we've got Kyle Wade, who I'm going to move to right guard immediately because he's going to compete for that spot. As could Michael Newsom, but I might even move him over. I mean, do we have any walk-ons there? No. So just in terms of balance, I'll keep it like this. Unless I move over. You know what? No, screw it. Uh, Lynn is going to move over to the left-hand side. And I'm going to put all three guys that are going to compete for the starting job on the right-hand side. So Piper is going to keep his job. He's going to be the starter. Uh, center, we've got Banks and Roberts. Roberts going to be the starter. Right guard, it's going to be one of these three guys. Not sure which, but it's definitely going to be one of these three. We'll see how Dooley uh, improves in the offseason. Uh, let's look at the Wade's pass or er, uh, blocking compared to Newley. I mean, he's a much better pass blocker, which that was the problem with Nordy and Newley. Newley's a little bit better run blocker, while Newsom's just the run blocker. Can't pass block. So if Newley allowed like 12 or 13 sacks last year, Newsom's got a 77. That's probably not going to be great. He might not start, actually, looking at that. Wade still might be better than him, even after Newsom improves a little bit. Right tackle, we've got Corcoran, Ben Hart, and Haley, who, again, could challenge Corcoran for the starting job. I think also Ben Hart could as well. More likely than not, Haley's probably going to be redshirted. Uh, left end, we've got Quentin Edwards in there, along with guy we recruited last year, Chris Brown. Newman is going to be depth. Edwards is going to be redshirted. Right hand side, we got Gilmore, Nolan, and Snyder. Decent there as well. I do think that Edwards is probably going to start at Defensive end after Robinson graduates, unless I get a freshman that's better. Defensive tackle, we have a walk on there as well. He's a 40 overall, so, and a Juco. So, yeah, if we need to cut somebody, I think I know who I'm going to cut. But we're pretty good at defensive tackle. Newtmacher, Hoopmacher's a junior, but he's going to be like fourth choice. Brian Brown was retro last year. He's going to be the number three guy. Outside linebacker, they put Matt Lamb there, but I think he's going to play down the middle. Uh, where's the guy? He's put him at right. Yeah, um, Monroe's going to be a left outside linebacker. For sure. Uh, this guy outside, we've got a walk. No, I think, yeah, Zach Owens was the guy that we got that we didn't really go after. Adam Taylor's probably going to be the number two if he doesn't challenge Gunnarsson for the starting job as well. Kyle, another guy that might be cut. Uh, yeah, I think Zach Owens is going to stay on just as a depth guy. Uh, Left-hand side, Name and White, I think, are both going to be middle linebackers. Unless we get a good, got a good walk on there. Let me check. No, we got no walk-ons. So yeah, they're both going to be middle linebackers. Uh, his overall, well, that's defensive tackle. That's why his overall went down so much. Marvin White goes down a little bit. So on the left side, we've got Monroe. Jamar Butler going to be his backup. In the middle, we've got Heinrich Lamb, who's probably 
they're going to start for this, uh, compete for the starting job. Uh, White's going to be redshirted, and then we got Snodgrass. Snodgrass and Heinrich are both seniors, so we really needed two middle linebackers. Glad to get them. Corner, uh, we have one walk on there. Another cut guy, Victor Osborne. He's a three-star prospect, but he's a 55 overall. Yeah, I don't know how that works, but yeah, not strong at cornerback. I think Travis Williams and Malik Williams might be two of the starters, but I think Cook could actually win that job. I thought he might be the be redshirted, but we might need him to play. Free safety, there's Tim Holly. Both our starters are seniors, so we needed at least one. I wanted two, but we got one. On the right-hand side, we've got Gifford McMahon, who's going to be a true redshirt freshman, and Isaiah Gifford. We're good there. Kicker, we got Leon Young. Penner, we got John Robinson. Not too many walk-ons, not too many changes needed. I think that's a strong team. All right, now quick scroll through the training results. Who got better? Who's our best player? It is a mix of Ty Robinson, Turner Corcoran, which feels crazy. He went up plus four. Leon Young is an 88 overall as a true sophomore. Wow. Uh, Holland also goes up six to an 88 overall. Speed goes up one. Uh, agility and acceleration go up one. Eight plus six for awareness is huge. Break tackle went up even more. Elusiveness and even more. Is he a more accurate passer? That's the thing we, we needed more than anything else. The awareness really helps, but accuracy. His throw power went up one. His accuracy went up four. I will take that. 82. I have some hope now. Jeff Holland might be a legitimate quarterback next year. All right, Pajaska in 87. He only went up three, even though he was a lot better than Corcoran. Uh, Miles Farmer also in 87. Blake Harper in 86 as a true sophomore. Uh, Hickman up to an 86. Banks up to an 86. Maybe he does start. We'll see how the other center is. Uh, ben Hart update in 85. Let's go by position. So Smothers goes up five, as does Green. Harburg up three. Uh, obviously, they're all pretty speedy. What about throw accuracy for Smothers specifically? That was the one thing that held them back the most. Uh, 81. Okay, it's better, but a really weak arm. Actually, the same as Harburg. Sam Green's definitely the number two at the very least. He looks pretty dang, pretty dang good. What's his awareness, though? That was his issue last year. He probably would have started last year if his awareness was better, and it's still not great. Still only 59. Running back, Jake Pierce goes up five to an 84. Speed gets better. Amir Johnson up to an 84 for a senior year. What about like break tackle and stuff for Jay Pierce? Plus five for break tackle. Plus three for elusiveness. Love to see that. Uh, Yaka Zient is even faster. Irvin and then McCray goes up plus five. He might stay on the roster. Fedone goes up plus three at fullback. Nixon goes up plus four. Donaldson also plus four. Did Donaldson's catching go up? Please say yes. His awareness is still pretty low. That's not as bad for a receiver as it is for like a quarterback. Catching up to 81. Not as much as I'd hoped for, but it's definitely an improvement. Nixon, 94 catching. He's going to be the, probably the main guy. Him and Donaldson. Uh, spec catch of 93. Catching traffic of 87. That's good. Route running of 88. Best route runner on the team. Bets. Let's look at his, because his catching was kind of an issue last year, too. 73. Yeah, after that, not great catching. Hill's probably going to be the number two. 76 catching. 82 spec catch. 75 catching traffic. 84 route running. Yeah, I think he's going to be, well, number three behind... Donaldson and Nixon. He goes up four as well. Hardy goes up five as a sophomore. Uh, tight ends. Jennings goes up six. Love to see that because he was tremendous. Gets even faster. Uh, Carney, pretty fast as well. Awareness is really good for a sophomore. Even got some break tackle ability. Catching was amazing last year and it gets even better. Goes up to 90. Spec catch, catching traffic, route running. He's going to be a monster. All right, left tackle. Projotska goes up three like we saw. Miller up three. Ram up five. He might even be the number two because I mean, Miller's a senior. Mark Graham, redshirt freshman. Prajatska is a junior, 87 overall. It was really good last year. Hyper goes up six, like that. Lynn goes up seven. Latovsky goes up four. Uh, Banks goes up six. Roberts goes up five. Probably still going to be the starter. Newly goes up five. Newsom up five. We'll see. We'll see when we get to the depth chart. Cork Ryan, 88. Ben Hart, 85. Ben Hart might be the starter. Pork Ryan was really bad last year. Robinson, up to an 88 overall. What's his pass rush stuff go up to? Obviously, we know he's a pretty decent run defender. He's got 84 power or hit power. Now, 79 power moves, 81 finesse moves. Still not crazy, but he's still our best pass rusher. 84 block shed, 83 pursuit. Still going to be one of our best defenders. On the right-hand side, Gilmore, only four is a little disappointing. I thought he had a pretty solid season. Speed gets a little bit better. Awareness is 50, though. I feel like that's a lot of it. That is really low. Uh, pass removes, I think, are pretty good, though. 
75 83 not bad don't love for caleb nolan's lack of pass rushing but got good block shed what about defensive tackle i thought tim hart was really good he goes up five hoop marker goes up six even though he like barely played buckley also up five uh let's look at like their block shedding that's like one of the more important things and pass rush ability which is what tim hart does 83 power 80 finesse love that brian brown also pretty decent pass rusher uh block shed really good for tim hart so Buck brown's actually pretty good too like there might be a chance where brown starts next to hart buckley is the number three guy because brown's a really good pass rusher and he's a pretty good run stopper as well strength is the lowest with tim hart we'll have to work it out butler goes up five heinrich goes up four a little disappointing so we can do a little bit better uh gunnerson goes up four as well kind of the same thing so he might need to be the starter uh, cornerback Gary Thompson goes up five. Buford goes up six. Uh, Williams goes up four. Lineup goes up four. The other Williams goes up five. Let's see what their coverage ratings look like compared to their awareness. Again, Travis Williams awareness very low. That is a little worrying, but he's got pretty good speed as does most of our cornerbacks. Uh, well, let's look at the actual coverages and tackling. Buford a really good tackler as is Lineup and Malik Williams. Travis Williams not as much. Uh, block shedding also buford really good as is williams typically something i kind of like from a slot receiver but coverage is king so uh pursuit and play rec pretty similar about everybody gary thompson's obviously a beast uh man coverage 88 for travis williams best in the team gary thompson 86 buford goes up to 85 maybe buford starts as the slot guy with that block shed and tackling who starts on the outside between williams and Williams I mean I think I mean just by coverage Travis Williams is better but his awareness is so low I might have Malik Williams be the number two with Buford in the slot that might be the plan all right free safety Palmer only or Farmer only four a little disappointing Polo Gates up three uh, Harper always saw only three is kind of disappointing but still an 86 overall is a true sophomore is pretty dang good McMahon goes up four Gifford up five Leon Young up to an 88, and we have no punter. All right, we have to cut five people. All right, we already know a couple of them. Uh, what was his position? I don't. I need to know what the position was. Was it one of a receiver that was really low? Yeah, one, well, two of them are. We'll see. They're, I'll probably will end up cutting both of them. But where's that dude that was like ridiculously, hilariously low? Was he a defensive end or something? No, a defense tackle. Yeah, Jackson. Yeah, you're gone. We got another one too. I think is a linebacker. Uh, no. Oh, we have this corner. That's right. So he's definitely gone. So now three more. All right. I think I've decided on our three cuts. And the first might be a little controversial. Logan Smothers is getting cut. Obviously, he's an 84 overall, which is not bad. But he's not going to be the starter. Jeff Holland's just better at everything. He's probably not going to be the number two. Sam Green also better than at almost everything. Awareness is an issue. That could be something that really harms him. But, you know, if we needed another guy, it'd be Harburg, who I think his attributes are just as good as Logan Smothers and he's a year younger. He's only a sophomore. So I just don't see any real scenario where Logan Smothers gets any sort of playing time. We've got Sean Washington as well, who again, could be another good option. So I think we're going to cut Logan Smothers. <sighs> Goodbye, Logan. <sighs> nice to know you. The second guy we're going to cut is Brian Newman, the defensive end. It was either between him or Taylor Snyder. Snyder's a lower overall, but he's a better pass rusher. His block shading is a little bit worse, but he's got better strength as well. He's a little bit slower, but his uh, pursuit is way better. That was kind of the ultimate deciding factor. So we're going to cut Brian Newman. We've got some young defensive ends with Quentin Edwards, Chris Brown, on the right-hand side, Gilmore, and Nolan. So I think we can afford to cut him. He was just a walk-on. So Brian Newman is gone. And the last one is going to be the walk-on outside linebacker from last year, Kevin Powell. We don't need him at all. Goodbye. All right, we are officially at the start of season three. We're going to start getting ready for the season by redshirting some players. Not a lot of surprises here. We kind of talked to them before. A few changes, though. Washington obviously getting redshirted, as is Little. Uh, I think the only real change we made, obviously, the three wide receivers are getting redshirted. Along the offensive line, we obviously had some decisions to make. Kyle Wade, do we redshirt him? Do we start him? I think we're going to start him. The biggest thing is, is I'm really worried about him potentially transferring. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and start him. Newly wasn't very good for us last year. His attributes are slightly better, but 
I still think I'm going to start Kyle Wade as a true freshman at right guard. All right, tackle Haley is getting redshirted. Long defensive line, both Edwards is going to, or just Edwards getting redshirted. At linebacker, a little bit of change as well. Lamb, we knew is probably going to get redshirted. That's going to happen. I think we're going to keep Marvin White, though, as kind of a rotational guy. He can play in the middle, can play on the outside. And we're going to redshirt Adam Taylor, who I thought I was going to have the number two guy. Then I thought he might start, but he has really low awareness and play rec. I don't love that. So I think Gunnarsson is, is going to be the starter. And then uh, Marvin White can be the number two guy with the other guy, Zach Owens. The walk-on is going to be kind of a, the third guy on both sides, the left and right. Uh, cornerback, BJ Cook getting redshirted. Free safety, Tim Hawley. And that's it. All right, I've set the depth chart. No real surprises, but we'll flip through it. On obviously a quarterback. Green being the backup. Got Pearson Johnson. Fedona fullback. Donaldson and Nixon are going to be the main two receivers and two receiver sets. Those are going to be the guys. And three receiver sets. James Hill's going to come in, but he's going to go on the outside. Nixon will move to the slot. And then we've got Betts and Hardy. A tight end, obviously Rodney Jennings and Chris Hickman. Uh, offensive line is going to be Prochaska at left tackle. Piper at left guard. Roberts in the center. Kyle Wade at right guard. And then Ben Hart's going to start the season as a starter at right tackle. If he struggles like Corcoran did, then I might as well throw Corcoran back in there. But right now, we're going to give the chance to Bryce Ben Hart. Defensive end, obviously Ty Robinson on the left, Gilmore on the right, Tim Hart, and I've decided to put Ryan Brown as the number two defensive tackle as the redshirt freshman over Buckley. But again, that could change. Brown's just such a good pass rusher, and we could really use some pass rush. So Brown might be able to bring that. Outside linebacker, Justin Monroe, going to start on the left-hand side. In the middle, it's going to be Nick Heinrich with Marvin White backing him up. And on the right-hand side, it's going to be Gunnarsson, also White backing him up. Cornerbacks is going to be Gary Thompson as the number one. No surprises there. I think I've gone with Malik Williams as the number two. He's got some pretty decent awareness, some pretty good coverage skills as well. Buford's going to be in the slot. And then Travis Williams is probably the best cover guy we have, but really low awareness. Player a little lower as well, so he's going to be the number four. And then Timon Lyram, or Lynam to back him up. Uh, safety is going to be Miles Farmer starting at free safety. No surprise there. McMahon is going to be his backup. He was redshirted. Bryce Harper going to start, obviously, as a strong safety with the man staying as his backup as well. And then we've got Leon Young and John Robinson. Yant is going to stay as our kick returner. Behind him, we've got guys like Buford, uh, Gary Thompson, who's got some really good speed. So he could be pretty good on kick returns. Sean Hardy and Burke Craig can also kind of do it. Our punt returner this year is going to be Xavier Betts. He has 99 agility. Decent break tackle as well. Alante Brown's going to be the number two. Richard Johnson might have some opportunities back there if Betts doesn't play very well especially in some big games where we just need anything we can get. I uh, think we've got James Hill who could do it, Tame and Lynam. And Leon Young has the best kick power, so he's going to take our kickoffs. We are almost ready to start year three here with the Cornhuskers. But first, we have to determine our non-conference schedule. I like to play one rival every single year. Year one, it was Oklahoma. Year two, it was Missouri. And we beat both of them. Now we need to add another one to the list. And also, I've been keeping track of some players that we just missed out on on recruiting. And there's one that is a very, very good starter already. And I want to take him on. He plays for Rutgers. He's a cornerback. And he's already their fifth best player as a true sophomore. His name is Brandon Wood. He's a cornerback that we really wanted in, in recruiting year one. We got all the way to signing day. We had a lead on him. And Rutgers went all in. And they brought him in. And can understand why. He's started for them as a true freshman. And he is fantastic extremely fast with 94 speed 92 man coverage 87 zone coverage he can press play rec is really high at 87 pursuit is even pretty good at 81 tackles a little bit low at 67 and his awareness is 62 but he still looks like a really really good player all right the way the schedule currently looks is our non-conference play we start against byu and take on south alabama number 15 miami and then southern miss Obviously, all of these are subject to change. We got to put a rival in there. We got to find a way to put Rutgers in there. But then we start Big Ten play, and we started off taking on a rival in Penn State before we already have a tough start to the season as we take on number six Michigan State before number 25 Purdue, Minnesota, which should be a comfortable win, then Northwestern, then number 13 Michigan, then number 20 Wisconsin. I think that's the first time we've taken them on. And then we end the season like we always do, taking on Iowa. All right, I think I've got a schedule that I'm happy with. We're going to start the season. At home, taking on South Alabama. They are one that were already on our schedule, but we're supposed to play them week two. We moved to week one, so we've got a little bit of an easier game, but we're not taking on an FCS team this year. Then we go away to take on a rival, and that rival this year is Colorado. Before we travel to Miami, take on number 15 Miami in non-conference play. 
I wanted to play a good non-conference team. And the game already had Miami on there. I thought that was fine. And then we week four, we end on conference play at home, taking on Brandon Wood and Rutgers before we start our Big Ten play. All right, now all that's left is to set up our preseason recruiting board. Before we do that, we need to know what positions we need to be targeting. So if we just click the red shirt part so we can see the whole roster, we're good at quarterback, we're good at running back, we're good at fullback. Wide receiver, I would be interested in adding one, maybe two players. Nixon and Betts are both going to be seniors next year. Donaldson, obviously, is still just a sophomore. He's going to be a long-term guy here, as will James Hill. And we do have Chad Brown, who we got this year. But I do think I'd like to add one more guy, if not two. Tight end, we need one in there as well. Hickman's a senior this year. So I'd like to bring in a third guy. Tackle, I think we need both a left and right tackle. Rajotska's going to be a senior next year. Mark Graham's probably going to take over from him, but Ezra Miller is also a senior this year. So bring in a left tackle. He can redshirt next year, be the backup to Mark Graham after that if he's not better than him. And the same thing at right tackle. It's We got a junior, a senior, and a freshman. Jack Haley is probably going to start next year over Corcoran. And then Ben Hart is obviously graduating at the end of this year. Guard, we've got two senior left guards. Uh, right guard, though, we've got Kyle Wade, who's going to be the starter this year. Newsom is probably going to start at left guard next year after those two graduate. Newly also graduating. So we'll only have three guards. So we'll need one more at the very least. And then we need a center as well. Grant Banks is going to be graduating. So it doesn't need to be great, though, because Tony Roberts is going to be the starter. We don't need him to be great just to be a backup. Defensive end, we don't need a defensive end. We've got Quentin Edwards and Chris Brown to take over from Ty Robinson. But if we could bring in a really good guy, because like they're both okay. Chris Brown, I mean, he's decent. Uh, 78 power moves, 81 finesse moves, 84 block shed. 47 awareness is very low, though. So if we could bring in like a stud defensive end that could start as a true freshman, I would be interested in that. But other than that, right in, we've got a bunch of underclassmen as well, so we don't really need anyone there. Uh, defensive tackle, I'd like to bring in one. Hoopmonker is going to be a senior next year. So, redshirt guy next year. He could be the fourth option, I guess. So, he doesn't really need to be that good either. Uh, outside linebacker, we need to bring in more linebackers. Jamar Butler is going to be a senior next year. So, I want to bring a guy to be the backup to jo Joseph Monroe. Uh, middle, both Heinrich and Snodgrass are going to be graduating after they, this year. Mark uh, Matt Lamb is going to be the starter next year. White's going to be his backup. But I would be interested to bring in another linebacker to be a middle linebacker for us. Maybe we can have a little bit of flexibility at the other positions as well. We've got Gunnarsson, who's going to be a senior next year, right outside linebacker. Taylor's going to be his replacement. Then we got Owen, so don't necessarily need a right outside linebacker, but could still add depth. A corner, I think we're actually pretty good. And we've got Gary Thompson, who's still young. Buford's still only a sophomore. Uh, Travis Williams is still a redshirt freshman. Uh, Malik Williams, a redshirt sophomore. Then we got BJ Cook, who's being redshirted this year. Uh, Lineham's a junior, but... He's the fifth guy right now. And then when BJ Cook is a redshirt freshman, he's going to be the sixth guy. So we've got five good young corners. We don't really need anyone there. Again, if we can add really good quality, I'm not going to be against it. Uh, free safety, both Farmer and Polo Gates are going to be graduating. We do have Tim Hawley, but McMahon's actually going to be the starter when those two graduate. So he's going to move over to free safety. And so we'll have Blake Harper with Gifford being his backup, but Gifford's going to be a senior next year. So we need a strong safety to be a backup and then we're good at kicker and we're good at punter all right we are at week one so we have everyone scouted and we've got our recruiting board set up our number one target to start the season is pass rusher emmanuel durbin he's a 77 overall we are second place just barely behind michigan and he is a very good pass rusher 85 power moves 82 finesse moves decent run stopper as well with that 82 block shed really really good pursuit at 88 player x pretty solid at 79 not the fastest, and his tackle's pretty low. Those are really the only negatives for him. He is pretty dang good, though. He could possibly start as a freshman, which is why he's our number one target. Up second, we've got Dylan Smith. Also, could maybe not, we wouldn't start as a freshman, but he'd be the number two tight end who gets a lot of game time in our system. So he could definitely make a big impact for us as a true freshman as well. Dylan Smith, we're third place for him. He is a very good receiving tight end. Got some decent speed, really good catching. Route running's good. Catching traffic's a little low, but still pretty decent. Spec catch really good. Blocking's good enough. He can even break some tackles. Then we've got a receiver, Andrew Branch, 77 overall. Fourth on his board, but it's pretty close. Six foot, 212. And he's pretty quick. Good speed, good acceleration. Agility a little bit low. Uh, catching solid at 75. Amazing route running at 86. 
Catch the traffic's a little low, but good release. Pretty solid, just receiving option. Uh, then we've got Luke Henderson, who's an athlete. who's probably another receiver, but he's kind of more of a gadget guy. 6'2", 214. He's got some good size. His catching's not bad at 76, but 67 catching traffic's pretty low. 76 route running is solid without being spectacular. Only 69 release, but he's got that 79 break tackle, that 92 elusiveness. Something not really... Most of our receivers don't have, so... He could bring something else. He's got some decent speed as well, some really good agility. Yeah, I could definitely find a role for Luke Henderson. And up next, we got JB Smith. Says he's a free safety, but he'd be a strong safety. I think that's his best position. Uh, he's pretty good. Good speed. A uh, really good tackling at 88. Pursuit and play rank are very solid. Coverage a little low, but you know, acceptable levels. Block shed a little bit low as well for a strong safety, but I mean, he's pretty dang good. He'd be a really good backup that would eventually start. Uh, then James Jameson, who is just exceptional at the defensive tackle. We're third on his board, and he's just so good. As a pass rushing defensive tackle, 86 power moves, 87 finesse moves. Strength a little low, block shit a little low, but really good pursuit and play rec as well. Good tackling. He is just exceptional. He, he would probably start pretty soon, just because he is very, very good right off the bat. Then we've got another receiver, Eric Cunningham. Not much size to him, but he's a good possession guy. 74 catchings, a little low, but he's got 90 route running, so he's always going to be open. Decent catch of traffic, decent spec catch, good release. Decent speed, 85 without being exceptional. Doesn't really break many tackles. Then we've got our first tackle, Timothy Jackson, the best really one available. We're second on his board, just barely behind Notre Dame. He's probably better at right with that higher run block, pass blocking a little low at 75. He's got really good strength, really good impact, really good right tackle guy. Uh, then we've got Adam Van, who's an athlete who's probably a cornerback. I think that's his best position. We're pretty low on his board, but like I said, start of the season, it's always pretty close. We'll see how it moves over the course of the rest of the season, but he's got some good speed. Decent size at well at 6'3". Uh, man coverage 88, zone coverage 84, press 82, 83 play rec, 76 pursuit. Tackling is the only thing that's pretty low, 54. But other than that, he's very, very solid. Then Robert Evans, he's a center, but... Don't really need a really good center, so I'd probably move him to guard. He'd start sooner at guard than he would at center. Pretty solid player without being exceptional. Good run block, decent pass block, decent strength. Just decent all around. Then we've got a couple more pass rushers. There are quite a few pretty good pass rushers in this class. Eric Moss, we're top of his board. And then David Vincent, a little bit further down on his. They're almost identical prospects. Speed acceleration, pretty close. Block shitting, 78-79. Pass rush moves, exactly the same. Player I can pursuit. Just pretty much identical as well. Tackling. Everything is really identical between these guys. So they're right next to each other. Then we got another corner. Robert Sims. He's pretty good. Third on his board. Uh, man and zone both at 85. Press at 83. Tackling a little bit better than the other guy at 69. Player X still really good. Pursuit solid. Good speed as well. Really, really solid corner. Uh, then we've got a backup tight end. That's Mike Francis. Pretty similar to the other guy. Uh, good speed. Just good at everything, but not quite as good as the other one. You know, he's got good receiving ability. He's got okay blocking ability. Okay break tackle ability. Just, he's just a step down. But still could be a good number two option. Then our second safety is going to be Brent Phillips. Again, he'd be better at strong safety. Sixth on his board currently. He's got some really good size at 6'4", 205. Good speed as well. Tackling's decent at 80. Pursuit and play rec, decent, 73, 71. Coverage... Zone's a lot lower than I'd like, but his man solid. Okay, block shed. He's a solid option to be a backup. Then another defense tackle, Antonio Miller. Also pretty good, but a little bit smaller. It's 254. Pass rush is not quite as good. A little bit better block shedding, better strength. Pursuit and Playrick, both pretty solid as well. Good tackling. Then the first linebacker. They're not really any good linebackers interested in us. Brett Marshall, he's five foot nine, which is pretty small. 230, though okay speed he's just okay 80 block shed solid enough coverage solid enough pass rushing like you can play all three positions probably which does have his uses then we've got another defensive end bill wade he is a juco so not as high on our board but got decent pass rush ability okay block shed again pretty balanced some pretty good speed that's where he kind of stands out over the other two guys uh, then we've got kind of our actual center prospect. The other one probably would move to guard. This guy would be a backup center, and he's 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 a backup center. Just like the next couple of guys are backup tackles, backup guard, backup guard, backup tackle. You know, we don't need 
stars. We just need guys that could be backups. And so um, they're all on my board. Put a few points into them. See if anyone else is super interested. They've got a couple guys who's got pretty high overalls. Two athletes. Antonio Brooks were top of his board. And then Joe Von Nelson were also top of his board. They're probably both best at cornerback. But they're not quite as good as the other corners. Brooks has some pretty good speed. 94, 92 acceleration. Six foot tall. 83 man, 84 zone. Not quite as good as the other guys. 77 press. Not quite as good. 85 play rec's really good, though. And, yeah, he's he's good. But just not quite as good. So he's a little bit lower on our board. We don't need a lot of good corners. You know, if we have get three, like, that's almost too much. We can't really play them all. So the other two guys are higher on our board. If, you know, the other teams go heavy into them, no one goes heavy into Brooks, he'd fly up my board. And then Jovan Nelson's kind of the worst of the bunch, but he could possibly play free safety as well. 67 tackling's decent. Man's 80 overall, 85 zone, 80 play rec, I guess a little bit lower. So I think it, he might be best at free safety, but I think he could definitely be a cornerback. And then that's the only guys we're putting points into. Got a couple other pass rushers that just aren't quite as good of pass rushers. They're more of run stoppers, especially Jake Williams with that 87 block shed, which is pretty amazing. 80 tackling as well. Good pursuit, decent play rec, decent strength. And then Chad Scott, a little bit more of a pass rusher with that 79 power moves, but he's got 80 block shed. Pretty good speed, good strength, decent pursuit and play rec as well, as long as tackling. Then this is the second best linebacker. It's Richard Dotson. He's a 67 overall. He's got some good speed. Coverage is a little low. Tackling is not a great. Player X a little low. Pursuit's decent. Pass rushing ability, eh. Block shedding, eh. It's just, there's not many that are interested in Nebraska, unfortunately. Uh, then Matt Clark, the backup defensive tackle option. That's just meh at everything. Okay. It's low strength, but as just a backup, he'd be fine. Uh, then Lionel Sims, who's a 74 overall, but uh, he's got a couple things I really don't like. 58 man coverage. Do not like that. And then 53 play rec, don't like that either. He's got really good speed, really good tackling, but yeah, just those two deficiencies, I'm not super hyped about Lionel Sims. A couple more, we've got Shedrick Sapp, a third linebacker that's just not very good in coverage. Decent block shed, pretty good block shed, but pursuit's pretty low, tackling's okay. Good acceleration, he's whatever. And then another couple higher overalls, but they're probably running backs, which we don't really need at all. We got Jermaine McDonald, and they're not even exceptional running backs. He's got okay speed, uh, 79 break tackle, 84 looseness, 70 trucking. He's he's whatever. And then Charles Hill, another running back. He's a little slow, 82 speed, 83 acceleration, 81 agility, 78 break tackle, 80 looseness. Could also play quarterback, but we don't need a quarterback either. Then we've got a fullback, Will Turner. Haven't even, uh, haven't even scouted him at all, but I mean, if no one goes for him, I'll take an OD2 or a fullback but I'm not really going to focus on it. We've got a fullback. We don't use much anyways. And then finally, the last player, Bobby King. Haven't really scouted him either. Just threw him on the board because we had an open spot. We'll see if we don't get any of the other guys. We will scout him at some point. If he's a gem, maybe go after him. I'm pretty happy with our board. I think we've got some really, really talented players on there. We've got a really good base to work off of. Now we just add little pieces on top that can be role players or players for the future that can help keep this team competitive. Now we've got our preseason All-Americans and the preseason polls. We've got some all NCAA first team players. Just a couple though. So if we go all NCAA first team, no one on offense, unfortunately, but we have some defenders. And surprisingly, Miles Farmer is the free safety in the all NCAA first team. I didn't expect that. And then Leon Young's the kicker. That one makes more sense. He was perfect last year. Second team, we've also got, I think, one player, again, no one on offense, but Ty Robinson is all NCAA second team. That one makes sense. Now, if we go to all Big Ten, we've got some players on there as well, first and second team. Still, no one on offense on the first team, but Ty Robinson's there. Tim Hart is there. That's cool to see. Uh, Maz Farmer, Blake Harper, Leon Young. And then for the second team, we have our first offensive player. That's Brian Donaldson at receiver. Would like to see that. I mean, I like to have our quarterback on there, but there's pretty good quarterbacks in the Big Ten. He's the only offensive player on the second team. We've got Buckley on there as well, who might not even start. And then I think we've got one more. That's Gary Thompson. Glad to see him on the list. And then the last thing before we wrap this up, the preseason polls. Where do we currently sit? We're not in the top 25. Clemson at top, Alabama second, then Georgia, Florida, Oregon. Michigan State, pretty high up there for a Big Ten team. Ohio State at eight. Uh, if we look at some more other Big Ten teams, Michigan, who we're taking on. 
Miami, who we're going to take on in non-conference play. Wisconsin up there at number 20. And then Purdue at 25. We're not in the top 25. We're not in the top 30. South Alabama is number 30. I had them first week because I thought they were bad. They're not bad. That might be a little bit tougher than I thought. We are still not even in the top 35. You see Iowa there at 33. Not in the top 40. I think we should be higher than this. Not top 45. There's Kentucky who routed us last year. And there we are at 47. The number 47 team in the preseason. We have an 86 overall team. 88 offense and 85 defense. A lot better than where we started. Preseason rank though, not as high as I'd like. Hopefully we can change that over the course of this season. So that is it for our off season. I'm pretty happy with how it's gone. We got Kyle Wade. That was the big thing. I'm glad to get him. Offset for some of the other guys, but I think we're still in a pretty good position. Week one, we're going to be taking on South Alabama in Lincoln. I'm looking forward to that one. It's going to be a tougher test than I thought we'd have, but hopefully we can start the season well. We had some pretty good starts, and we've done pretty good in non-conference play the past two years. Hopefully we can keep it going this year. If you made it this far, why don't you like the video, subscribe, and click the bell. The links to all my socials and my Twitch are in the description. I really appreciate all your support. Thank you all for joining me, and I'll see you next time.